Oh, hey guys, sorry about that. I was just looking at the uh, mountain. Anyhow, today we're gonna talk about probably one of the most controversial topics that has ever been talked about in the firearm world, and that is, which is deadlier, the M4 or the AKM slash the AK-47? This is a topic that has been debated to death and there has been no definitive answer, right, Micah? Never. But you know what we're gonna do? Prove it? We're gonna definitively answer the question, which is deadlier? Today on Grand Them, hope you'll stay tuned as we talk about and show which is deadlier, the M4 or the AKM. Ready? Yeah. Oh my god. Before we get into it, we of course have to thank the biggest sponsor of the channel. Big sponsor of the channel is who, Micah? Uh, the Sonoran Desert Institute. That's right, the Sonoran Desert Institute. We are a big fan of them. If you're looking to get your start in gunsmithing, go and check them out. They've been a longtime supporter of Grantham. They have supported all of our insane science, so we of course have to thank them very much. And of course, we cannot forget who, Micah? Uh, primary arms. That's right. And uh, I don't know, what are they cooking up? Well, they have their peanut butter uh, compact one to eight that's out, which is awesome, which we love very much. And of course they have um, awesome red dots that are nice and affordable and that we like quite a bit too. So, and of course, if you dry fire, you should have a Mantis system. So Mantis is basically a recoil system as well as a laser to show you exactly what's happening during your dry fire. Me and Micah dry fire quite a bit to get better at shooting. In fact, uh, talk to any professional shooter and they do a shit ton of dry fire so go and check out mantis they're a huge sponsor of the channel we love them very much and finally unlike the camera that this is recorded on unlike the tv that you're watching this on aac ammunition is made in the united states go and check them out we're using a lot of aac made ammunition today so of course we have to give a big thank you to them you know i think i'm pretty biased because uh you know the urgi was my service weapon at the end so like i think that the m4 is just gonna be deadlier what do you think micah uh I think that uh, the the AK is more of like a deadlier against flesh. What? But the AR-15 is gonna be deadlier versus armor. Dude, you've been playing way too much Tarkov. What is your <laughs> what is your basis? In I don't know. It's like a 30 cal projectile, big wet holes. You know, like it's that large. was that was that was referencing that Ukrainian soldier was talking about 308, not 762 by 39. So you believe that 30 7.62 by 39 is gonna be deadlier due to the larger? I round. think in flesh, yes. Like just bare flesh for sure. Well, that's an interesting uh, postulation. So let's talk a little bit about the difference between between the M4 and the AKM. Here we have the 7.62 by 39, and right here we have the 5.56 by 45. This being the main round of the AKM slash the AK-47, and this being the main round of, well, many weapons, but specifically the M4 carbine. Now, there might be some confusion on AKM versus AK-47 and an M4, but we do have an M4 carbine right here, as you can see, and the upper right here we have is what's called a URGI. This is fairly standard issue of men's SOCOM. Uh, there is not a whole lot of difference beyond accuracy compared to the earlier M4 carbines. It is still a 14.5 barrel, just like you'd see on the M4 carbine, um, just a little bit smoother to fire. So we have the same ballistics that you'd get from an M4 carbine, despite looking a little bit different. Now, right here, we do have a fairly accurate representation of an AKM. This is a Tule 56 kit that was made by PSA for me specifically for these types of videos, and it is a fairly faithful reproduction with the exception of the side rail optic, just in case we want to add an optic on there for certain videos. Um, this, of course, has a 16-inch barrel, as is standard with the AKM, and um, I think that is a possible disadvantage for the M4. So the AKM already has a longer barrel, which is going to lead to um, better propellant expansion. So specifically, the AKM has always been designed to use a 7.62 by 39 with a 16-inch barrel. Well, as 5.56, specific, specifically the 55 grain M193 was designed originally for a 20 inch barrel, which was later shortened to a 14.5 with the M4 carbine. So you might be onto something, Micah. The 5.56 being a smaller round does depend on velocity to get really good results. So I'm going to be interested to see what happens. So to be clear, this little M193 right here is a 55 grain projectile it's traveling around. Mm. 29 to 3,000 feet per second. The 7.62 by 39 is a 122 to 123 grain round, traveling around 2,400 feet per second. So slower, 
but much larger. So I'm really interested to see how these do. Now we are doing multiple tests here today, but we're gonna start with the two most basic rounds. I'm guessing that a lot of you probably have a shit ton of M193, and if you have an AKM, you're poor, and you probably have a shit ton of this right here, just standard Tula ammo, either made in Russia or made in Ukraine. Pretty much the same stuff regardless. So we're gonna start with these two rounds. We will then be moving to more advanced rounds to see what the performance envelope for both of these rifles is going to be, but we're gonna start with the basic rounds and see which is doing better. All right, we have the M4 carbine to start. We're gonna be shooting at ballistics gel. We have the M193. We're at about seven feet right here. Uh, we're not doing uh, terrible distance. We're just looking at basic CQB distance as far as damage is concerned. Distance will be a whole new video. So let's go ahead and let's get this started. M193. So take a look, what we have right here, as you can see where the entrance is. So we have about a solid eight inches of penetration. Then the bullet begins to yaw and fragment and break apart. And we have a fairly good wound track right there. Let's take a look here. I don't see that the projectile, you can see fragments of it all the way through. Looks like pretty good expansion and performance overall. Next up, we have the AKM right here and uh, we'll see how it performs. All right, Mike, are you ready? This is a really interesting result and it seems to be very indicative of those of those things that we're seeing in country in theater from various combat uh, medics and different surgeons. So I think it's pretty cool that it matches up to that. Yeah, it's cool when science matches up with real experiences, right? When, me, when science matches up with science. When science matches up with science. Um, so we've seen the M193 versus the 123 grains. Let's start stepping it up. Let's do some of the specialty rounds and see how those perform in gel. I would say after this initial test that with cheap ammo, it would definitely show that the AK with the 762 by 39 delivered significantly more performance, I would say, at the close range. The far range would be harder to ascertain, but certainly it was more energetic when it came to the 762 by 39 The big thing with your rounds is you want to make sure that it has enough pass-through impact vital organs or something along those lines. Another great thing about a heavier round is it's a little bit easier to punch through cover. Certainly the 762 by 39 does have that. The cost, of course, is going to be heavier weight per round and of course more recoil. So an interesting initial test. Let's go ahead and let's see how the higher performance rounds um, are gonna do. Okay, next up we have the uh, better performing rounds. We're gonna start with the 77 grain OTM from Sierra Match King. This is a very common projectile that is used within the military. It's heavier, uh, open tip match, and it tends to perform very well at long distances. I'm interested to see how it performs at this distance right here. All right, let's go see the damage. This is like one of those things where you talk to a Sierra uh, employee and you're like, do you have any idea how many people Sierra Match Kings have killed? A lot, because that is a violent, violent impact right there. The projectile is broken completely apart at the six inch mark. And then the further projectiles, the flower petals have come out to around 10 inches. This is definitely for shooting against a unarmored opponent, but as you can see, the results are um, pretty freaking devastating. Those little petals are gonna shred arteries and it's a bad day, man. That is a violent round. Okay, next up, we're gonna have um, the Barnes 70 grain TSX round. This is a solid copper round. It is supposed to be uber violent. I'm very interested to see how it performs. This is a round that has been used heavily within the military. So let's go ahead and see how it performs. So the 70 grain TSX from Barnes um, was extremely energetic. So when that expands and it comes back in, you see that explosion, um, that temporary cavity as it's contracting, it's like a piston. Uh, oxygen is obviously combustible, that's why you see a little explosion there and all the uh, fart come out from mica. So um, the round had a lot more carry through, it had a much uh, greater tendency to yawn as it, as it rolled through. It didn't really break apart nearly as much, so this round has a lot more carry through. Overall, uh, excellent performance from the TSX round, it passed straight through. Um, just depends on the type of target that you're dealing with, but uh, excellent performance from there. I'm interested to see what the M855 Alpha 1 performs like. Okay, next up, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run the M855 Alpha 1. This is the current issue military ammunition, has a steel penetrator with a copper projectile surrounding it. It's supposed to perform pretty well. There have been reports that it performs a little worse than M855. I'm interested to see. Let's go ahead and check it out. Whew. 
Finally, we have the Red Army Standard 8V3, and uh, it did great, so here we go. Ready, Micah? Ten. God. Okay. So, M855 Alpha 1 was the round I used in the URGI. Um, never shot anybody with it. Uh, a buddy of mine did, and when he shot somebody in the chest, it exited out through his leg. M855 Alpha 1 is a violent round. Uh, this round, what it has a tendency to do is that the steel penetrator obviously went straight through, but the copper jacket, as you can see right here, if you want to come over top and take a look right into there, immediately started to shed its uh, projectile as it began to tumble and yawn. You can see the temporary cavity was pretty intense as well as uh, just the amount of energy that it dumped into that uh, piece of gel. Impressive results. I think that's going to be the round we're likely going to shoot the dummy with along with the 77 grain. Pretty impressive. Wouldn't you agree, Micah? Th that was bananas. That I was mean, very the violent. The fact that it started splitting like, and just fragmenting immediately while also just penetrating all the way out the back is nuts. You always got to penetrate out the back, man. That's the way life works. First one we're going to shoot, Micah, is going to be the Hornady SST. This has a ballistic tip on it. Micah, you ready? On you. All right. Hornady SST. So I thought that the Hornady SST would be extremely violent. Uh, in some ways, it was actually less violent than the FMJ. Uh, it did shed its jacket, um, which is good. And it definitely did a good job tumbling and, and fragmenting and breaking apart. And we still had a, a section that came out, so it's got that carry through. But um, it didn't perform to the level of those really good 5.56 rounds. Um, I'm, I'm kind of surprised, honestly, because like Hornady with their SSTs, like they're good rounds. Next up, we have the Red Army Standard RAS. Uh, it's going to be the 8V3. It is a hollow point projectile that does pretty well. It's supposed to be uh, fairly energetic. Let's check it out. Ready, Micah? Send it. <laughs> Finally, we have the Tula. This is going to be the 8M3. Uh, very similar, if not the same projectile. Let's see how it performs. You ready, Micah? Send. All right, here we go. Well, that was the worst one yet. It performed uh, worse than the FMJ. Uh, come over to the side, like we were, we were showing before, Micah. So the wound track is this upper portion. It definitely had a little bit of yawning and expansion, but for, for a, a more ex expensive round, I would have expected to see a, a lot more performance out of it. Nonetheless, we will test it on the ballistic dummy, but um, I would say overall a little bit disappointing. Uh, these are roughly the same projectile, so I'm not sure if it's uh, projectile inconsistency, um, if they truly aren't the same projectiles, or if um, it, less powder, uh, slower round, I'm not sure. So right here we have the uh, Blizzik Dummy from Blizzik Dummy Labs, um, and uh, it has bone, has organs, and it roughly approximates the human form. Obviously it can't be uh, precise because we can't shoot humans on the channel. I guess talk to Google about that one. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go left side with 5.56, right side with uh, 762 by 39 and we're going to use the best performing rounds, which uh, for the 5.56 was like, which was like all of them. But we're going to start with M193 and the 123 grain FMJ uh, and start working up. And we'll, we'll, see what we, we'll see what we get, right, Micah? You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. It's facts right there. All right, let's go. All right, first up we have what everybody uses, which is what, Micah? Uh, 55 grain. M193, baby. All right, let's see how it does. You know, I, I forget that M1 just has it, dude. So we have the entrance began to flower out. Um, but what's cool is as it hit bone and everything, it just explodes. Come take a look at the back. That is a wonderful exit wound out the spine. Uh, take out chunks with it, exited. You could see the flowering off the projectile as it splintered. 100% um, that is going to put you into the ground. You're, you're donezo at that point. All right, first up, we have the 123 grain, just standard FMJ. From great in gel. Uh, now we'll see how it performs in a kind of a human. Right, Micah? Beautiful, beautiful exit wound. Completely blew out the spine. In this case, this is the uh, stand holding it up. Uh, definitely more energetic than the M193. Um, you can see the entrance began to flower almost immediately. I would definitely say, Micah, that when it comes to cheap ammo at uh, close range, 
the AKM is 100% um, a deadlier round, I'll I would take say. Take it. That's, that's, that's one. That, that's a win for the AKM yeah. for the cheap ammo. So uh, AKM, Chad's, I guess, stay winning when it comes to that. That's only the 7.62 variant, so. All right, let's uh, walk it up to the uh, complex rounds. Okay, next up, we have the 77 grain OTMs. These are the rounds that I mostly carry. Uh, and you as well, Micah, right? I do. Yep, let's see how they do. All right, uh, AAC, Sierra Match King, 77 grain. Ready, Micah? Set. I feel like a proud dad at how his son performed. So we have the 77 grain OTMs right here. You can see it did a great job on its exit of just shredding as it came through because it dumped a lot of its energy and just tended to explode and shred the projectile. So we've checked the entrance right here. It stayed stable as it entered. It looks like it slipped between the ribs. It still cracked that bottom one from the uh, force of the impact as well as the top one. Yeah, that's broken. And uh, looks like it shreds straight through the lungs. That's a, uh, I'm no PJ, but that's a pretty bad pneumothorax. You know what that is, Micah? No. It's just blood in the, in the plural cavity. Anyhow, that guy is uh, going to die eventually. Finally, we have the Red Army Standard 8V3, and uh, it did great. So here we go. Ready, Micah? Send. God. We have a nice little exit wound right here. Blew out a nice little chunk. Larger than the 77 grain OTM. And it looks like you can see all the fragments out right there. It performed very admirably. So we check at the front here. Being a 30 cal projectile, it had a larger entrance wound. And it looks like it similarly cracked the top and bottom ribs. And dumped a lot of its energy and fragmentation through the lungs as well. Um, so the 8V3 um, did quite well. I'm, I'm very happy with its performance. And it performed very well in ballistic gelatin. So... That's good. Well, what we have next is going to be the Hornady SST versus the M855 Alpha 1. Very interested. Next up, we have the uh, M855 Alpha 1. You ready, Micah? Send. <laughs> that is a fucking mess. Okay, so the, the M855 Alpha 1 in this, uh, in this case, as you can see what it struck, it immediately started to shred open into the body and uh, displace all of its force, uh, completely shattering the rib as well as the sternum right here. That's completely shattered. Yeah, that uh, flowering is crazy. Yeah, right that's insane. Away too. Um, as it traveled through, it deviated onto the spine, struck the spine. It's uh, it's a little bit of a mess in here, but it, it completely shattered that spine right there. You can see it's a gooey little mess right there, and it looks like the uh, the main projectile itself, the steel penetrator, actually stayed within there, which is really interesting. Uh, there's a possibility that it exited out through one of the entrance holes, but I don't see any. So, um, very interesting performance from the M855 Alpha 1. I thought the steel projectile would have gone through, but I guess the human body is... What, what's the word, Micah? Bussin? That's a word. It, it's complex. It's, <laughs> it's complex. Let's... Okay, next up we have the Hornady SST, and uh, I don't know. Maybe I was kind of underwhelmed great. with this one, but we'll see. Maybe it'll do great. All right, you ready, Micah? Send. Yeah, I'm never really sure what, what, a, what a ballistic dummy is going to do. Uh, <laughs> in that case, that would appear to be a, an incredibly devastating wound, but that wasn't specifically due to the round, but rather due to just the... Uh, You know, you know I, that was that was incredibly that, unfortunate what you just did I'm, to me there. I am so sorry. I've I wore this stupid ass Russian helmet. Where'd you get it this from? Entire time, Misty Mountain Supply. We love Misty Mountain Supply. I'm sorry, Micah. I'll buy you new chucks, dude. These are vans. Ready? Yeah. Oh my. So with that being said, we could see the Hornady SST. Um, you can see it had excellent, uh, nice little twisting as the uh, projectile spun through and began to break up. Um, pretty, pretty good. It looks like it dragged a lot of bone with it. And if we rotate this over, um, oh. unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, it looks like 
the, uh, the, the entrance wood itself was uh, partially disguised, but what's important to remember is that both the AKM, the AK-47, and the M4 are two of the most popular weapon systems in the world for good reason. They're both reliable, they're both extremely accurate. So let's start with the AKM. Um, the 123 grain FMJ projectile, just your standard Tula, Wolf, performed extremely, extremely well. Um, it definitely beat out the M193 from the M4 uh, as far as the cheap ammo is concerned. I was very pleased with its performance. So when it comes to that, the AK was a definite winner when it comes to lethality from its cheap ammunition. Now, once we got into more specialty ammunition is where the 7.62 by 39 became um, pretty eclipsed, especially when it came to the M855 Alpha 1, the current military round. The 77 grain OTM also performed extremely well. I would say the 8V3 and the 77 grain performed similarly in terms of uh, terminal ballistics. But one thing we can't really account for, or that we didn't in this particular video, was that the 77 grain OTM is an extremely accurate round um, from 14.5 accurate well out to about 700 meters. That is not the case with the Tula ammunition. So uh, certainly uh, they're on par with each other. It's a 77 grain and the 8V3. However, when it comes to uh, long range lethality and accuracy, the M4 definitely wins out. Now, when it comes to the um, best round from the M4, the M855 Alpha 1, um, it is a clear winner. Um, I would say the round is extremely devastating with pretty consistent performance. So when it comes to these specialty rounds, I would definitely say that the M4 is a winner. When it comes to cheap ammunition, the AKM is a winner. But the real winner here is anybody who owns these weapons because if there's one thing that's gonna keep a free nation, it's making sure that every single one of us is armed and trained. So whether you choose an AKM, whether you choose the M4 or the AR-15 variant, you're gonna be fine. Make sure you train with it, you understand the capabilities and what these rifles are good at. And when it comes to lethality, you have a little bit more information um, about the deadly effects of these rifles and how good they are at what they do. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, did we solve anything? I think so. What do you think, Micah? I think we did. I thought the AK was going to, I guess, do better. You know what? I was actually pleased. I thought the AKM was going to do way worse. I was very pleased with its performance. I thought the M193 would do way better. So, you know what? We were all pleasantly surprised, and we had a, we had a what? We had a really good time. Yeah, the, maybe the real ballistic winner was how ballistic Friends. our friendship was along the way. That's very true. Well, guys, anyhow, we appreciate you guys watching. Hope you guys stay tuned for more videos. And as always, uh, stay training out there. All right, dad advice for today. So we're gonna do something a little bit different, but uh, very few people read a book anymore. Most of the reading is done on the internet. I'd highly encourage you to go and read a book. There's a lot of great information out there. And in fact, a lot of the older books were not tainted by the internet and were, was a lot of great opinion from men who are very good at one subject. Go and read something, learn something new, and uh, be better every day. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching and we have nothing else for you.